By now we know that lots of sitting causes stiff hips, but do you know what else causes stiffness? Using your hips a lot. Yeah, I know, it's like we can't win, right? But most sports or movement hobbies require power, agility, and put some type of impact on the body. And over time, this can result in stiffness. Some sports require you to be flexible, such as throwing a high kick or spreading your legs wide on the wall. But the most commonly played sports, don't. You don't need much flexibility to run a 5K or play soccer with your friends. Now, I don't wanna lie to you and tell you that doing the splits will make you a better football player because it most likely won't. But speaking from experience, most athletes eventually run into the same problems. Tight, inflexible muscles, limited range of motion, and pain popping up in random places. You don't need to become a flexibility wizard, but there are some essential ranges of motion that we think will keep your hips feeling good, during and after your athletic career. If you wanna take your mobility seriously, we suggest using the free mobility routine we created, link is in the description box. Most athletes create strong, powerful legs and a lot of that comes from the glutes and the muscles deep inside the hip. This can be great for jumping and sprinting, but it causes the rotation of the hip to stiffen over time. The pigeon stretch is essential for maintaining that rotational range of motion. Here's some different versions of pigeon stretches you can try. We're gonna start with the easiest and move to the most advanced. The hip elevated 90-90 pigeon variation is a great jumping off point. Just simply getting into this position might already feel like a nice stretch. Sit down with one leg in front of you and one leg behind you. Elevate your front hip with a pad and get your knee close to 90 degrees. Use your your hands for assistance and let your chest gradually fall down towards your shin. Rather than passively laying into a stretch, we're big fans of getting those stretch muscles to do some work. So dip your chest down low and then raise yourself up by driving your knee into the ground to activate that hip musculature. Now in the beginning, you may not be able to get your chest down very low at all, but that's okay. Work in the range that you have. Do five to 10 repetitions here. And on your last rep, hold in that deepest position for 10 to 30 seconds. The elevated pigeon isn't necessarily harder, but it requires a bit more setup and it can give you better leverage. You can simply use your couch or a bench and the higher the object, the less intense it will be. When you first start out, place something under the knee to get the knee higher than the foot. And with each of these pigeon variations, it's important to try to get your knee as close as you can to 90 degrees. This will allow you to get those deep rotator muscles. Now, same as before, bring your chest down towards your shin. You can experiment with bringing your chest towards your knee or more towards your foot. And each of these will give a slightly different stretch in your hip. And I love this variation because we can easily change the amount of assistance we're getting from the hands. And eventually we wanna be able to do this with no hands at all. Now your muscles are getting stronger in those stretched positions, which we consider the most useful type of mobility. One cue that helps me a lot is imagining I'm bringing my ribs towards my shin instead of just trying to fold forward. As you gain experience and confidence in this new range of motion, we'll take away the object under the knee so that your shin is parallel and you can lower the height of the object so you can get closer to the ground over time. Do five to 10 repetitions at a time and on that last rep, hold for 10 to 30 seconds. So our recommendation is to try both of those first two variations and to see what feels most comfortable for you and then to do that one. You shouldn't move on to this next variation on the floor until you feel comfortable and strong in one of those first two variations. The floor will require the most flexibility. And it took me a long time to get comfortable here. And I wanna share my technique. I start in a lunge position with my hands on the ground and then actively drive my knee outwards towards the ground. This gets my hip musculature active and ready to open. After around five reps, I set the knee down using a cushion at first to elevate that knee. Using my hands for assistance, I now put my weight into my hip and I let my chest fall down. Now I can rest into this position or do my repetitions as we did in the previous variations. There's actually no rush to get to this ground variation. I think that you can maintain a healthy amount of mobility with one of the first two variations or both. 
On the opposite side of the body are the quads and the hip flexors, and we know that these play a big role in athletic performance. Running, jumping, pivoting, these all require a lot of work from the quads and hip flexors, and I know most of you know what it feels like when your quads feel like rocks because you've been training so hard. But it's actually really important to have good hip extension, which allows you to push off like in a stride or a jump. Foam rolling can be a good tool, but in my experience, it doesn't keep the quads fully healthy on its own. The couch stretch should be in all of our weekly routines. Here's how to find a level that suits you. The chair version is a nice place to start. And if you know you have tight quads, use this version first. Place your knee up on the chair and then put your foot either on the back of the chair or on the wall. Now squeeze your core and butt muscles and bring your torso upright while pushing the hip forward. This is way better than your conventional grabbing the foot and trying to pull it behind you because you actually lock your leg into place and you can create more leverage. You can bend your torso forward when you're first starting this but over time your goal should be to get more and more upright the great thing about the couch stretch is moving to more advanced variations is really easy you just get your knee lower to the ground over time so the next progression you may use a yoga block or two to elevate your knee as you move to the next level you may want to spend some time with your chest facing the ground before you gradually move it more upright the more you drive your butt to your heel without overextending your lower back, the greater the stretch will be. You can make the stretch even a bit more intense by raising your arms overhead. So just like the pigeon, we wanna activate our muscles while we're stretching them for max gains. In the couch stretch, we can make things more dynamic. You can do this by simply bending at the hip and releasing the stretch, then squeezing your glutes and your core and pushing your hip forward as hard as you can for about a second before releasing and bending the hip again. This allows us to push intensity into that stretch position and then ease off. Now I've also found it helpful recently in my own training to load this stretch by using a light dumbbell overhead. This simply puts more weight onto my body which forces me to use my quad and my hip more while I stretch. So we recommend holding the couch stretch for 30 to 60 seconds, no matter if you're doing the dynamic or static variation. It's essential that you take these stretches slow and understand that these stretches are far more potent than just passive stretching. This means use caution and never move into pain and use the regressed versions longer than you'd think. If you have any questions like how many days a week to do these stretches, we answer all of them and more in our free mobility routine, make sure to sign up. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, what about those hamstrings? I actually just made a hamstring flexibility video that will pop on the screen right now. But if you guys wanna see a deep dive like this video into the hamstring stretches that we use in our free mobility course, then let us know in the comment section below. As you become more flexible, have fun with it. Only use your powers for good. Like this video, subscribe to, subs subscribe to Strength Side, as always.